I'm definitely going to pivot here a little bit uh, and, 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 and switch where, where my stories were going to go to piggyback off both of, of Audrey and, and Alex as it relates to what I would classify as overall uh, data integrity um, and, and what to do with analytics and insights that you have. Now, this could be, you know, all types of data. Uh, to Audrey's point, you know, when you talk about uh, either ready to ship dates or expected receipt dates when you're looking at transit times, you know, do you trust the information that you have in your systems or the intel, the feedback that's coming from your vendors and suppliers? And as, as uh, you know, we just heard from Audrey, expedite fees are not something anyone can live with on a regular basis. I had, uh, I had, an e-commerce retailer of, uh, of home goods last summer tell me they allocated $20,000 a month for expedite fees. And these, these are not large companies, you know. Um, a women's apparel company told me earlier this year that they expedite up to 300 orders on a monthly basis. And that's not sustainable, especially when you're talking about, um, you know, meeting demand on a seasonality basis as well. So they do it to you know, not miss uh, the, the seasonal booms that they see. But at the end of the day, you know, what you need is accurate data to avoid these problems and data that you can trust. Now, the challenge is, you know, especially that we've seen uh, with the port delays, especially is that, okay, well, the transit time used to be three months. Well, what happens when it ships on time, but then it gets stuck in the port for an additional three months that no one was anticipating. So it seems like we're coming out the back end of those those uh, those challenges, but you know, getting away from unnecessary expenditures is something that is you know looked at to be solved by data. And data is great, uh, and analytics and insights are great, but you know, unless you can compile them into a strategic report that's actionable and actually make adjustments on that data then what good is it? So this goes back to kind of my, my comment earlier, uh, my first story from WMS, you know, okay, organizing data is wonderful, but you also have to be able to utilize it in a strategic fashion. Uh, everyone has data, but not everyone has the ability to organize it and analyze it to make changes that are affecting their bottom line in the organization to avoid the costs that we've been talking about kind of on this second round on the panel. So I think that the challenge I'm, I'm looking at here is helping companies understand and manage uh, and trust the information that is passed back and forth uh, throughout this, not necessarily supply chain, but overall supplier network and supply network. Um, because it is a chain, but it's also a network. Uh, to Alex's point, you know, procurement is a multitude of different divisions working together. And so in, in the same breath that it's a chain, it's also a, a vast network of individuals trying to uh, put together actionable data and insights to help organizations run more effective. 